Joining us on the line, the Main Street Family Urge Care Hotline, from the Tuscaloosa News, Aaron Suttles. Aaron, how you doing this afternoon, bud? I'm well, guys. How are you? We are doing great. Most obvious question that I'm pretty sure you've been asked a lot is what you saw yesterday at, at practice with the quarterback battle. I saw a lot of guys being inconsistent. I didn't see anything that I didn't expect to see. I didn't expect to see any um, any huge breaking news out there, but um, I was not really all that impressed with Cooper Bateman, you know, especially early in practice. I thought he got better as the practice went along, but early on his balls were very inconsistent, very inaccurate. Right, for my money, I thought Jalen Hurts had the best day. Um, I thought he had the most consistent day. Um, I thought Blake Barnett did some good things, too. He particularly rolled out on one one pass going to his left and threw a strike for a touchdown. But uh, I, I say all that knowing that, that Jalen is, is a true freshman, probably unlikely to start, uh, definitely unlikely to start against Southern Cal. But he's a guy I would look forward to. Uh, Look for going forward because I think he's a, a huge, huge talent. So, with Jalen Hurt doing pretty well, could you see a scenario where maybe he goes with Blake Barnett, but we still see Jalen Hurt in special packages this year? Uh, that's a popular question. I don't know. We don't. I, I, I can't even remember last time I him at a, spe, a special package with his quarterback. I, I know fans like to daydream about that, but we really haven't seen all that much of it. When we've seen, I guess, a little bit of Wildcat. Back when Mark Ingram was there, um, the jet sweep seems to be the, the special package these days. Yeah. Um, I, I do. I don't I, call me just a foolish optimist, but I, I don't think Jalen Hurts will redshirt this year. I think they're going to try to get him some experience. I, I think skill set wise, he's the best quarterback on the roster. Um, he doesn't have the traditional heights of a quarterback like Blake Barnett, um, but in terms of strength and speed and just poise. And leadership, I think that all of it points to Jalen Hurts being a star. But you got to do it in between the lines, and uh, we haven't seen that yet. We'll know a lot more about the quarterback situation after Saturday's scrimmage. Aaron Suttles from the Tuscaloosa News joining us on the Main Street Family Urgent Care Hotline. Aaron, along those lines, if, if one of the freshmen, you say it's Jalen Hurts or Blake Barnett, win this quarterback job this year at some point during the year, what do you think that does to the to the remaining two quarterbacks in, in, in David Cornwell and Cooper Bateman on the roster, or even two guys like uh, that are committed for the 2017 class in Jones and, and Tua? Well, I think you have to look at it. Um, I was asked this earlier today on another show, if, if Jalen Hurts won the job with Blake Barnett transfer, absolutely would. And it would be kind of foolish not to if a younger guy beats you out. Um, what it says for the next year's class, that's a good question with Tua and – with for Mac, um, I don't know. You know, a lot a lot of these kids have a lot of confidence in their own abilities, and that's that's a good thing. You don't want to recruit someone who doesn't believe in themselves. But um, if Alex plays a if, a if a freshman wins the starting job, it could change a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I think definitely one way or another, one or two of these current quarterbacks are on the roster this year um, might seek a transfer by the end of this year. Changing topics, I guess, staying with the youth movement we're talking about. As far as some of the freshman guys that are there, the true freshmen that have come in this fall, who do you see as contributing right away this year? I know some of the big talks being with Raquan Davis and, and B.J. Emmons, but who are some of the guys that you see contributing this year? Well, certainly I think Ra 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 Raquan has a, has a role um, just as a run stuffer at 6'7". Another guy is Shaheen Carter, a freshman defensive back who – I think they might be able to find a starting role even in, in the dime defense as the money back this year. Uh, I think he's a really talented player. You look at a guy like you mentioned, B.J. Emmons and Joshua Jacobs. They they need depth at running back. I don't think either of those guys redshirt. I think they play a role in this year's team. Uh, other freshmen really like Irv Smith and Miller Forstall, both freshman tight ends. Um, that was a position last year that had basically no depth, and all of a sudden – they bring in two freshmen who look college-ready in terms of their physical development, and that position is a lot stronger this year than it was this time last year. And then just physical freak kind of guys. I don't know how much they'll play just because the competition of their, their respective positions is pretty stiff, but Terrell Hall is six foot five, 247 pounds, looks like a full-grown man already, looks incredible. But he's an outside linebacker where – They've got Ryan Anderson and Tim Williams and Christian Miller and a ton of other guys. 
Um, and another guy is Ben Davis, inside linebacker, 6'4", um, really big kid. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, I think Jonah Williams has a starting role on that offensive line somewhere. Uh, right now he's playing right guard. You know, he's a guy that can literally play any position on the offensive line, and uh, he can play, even play center. So he's a guy that will, will start from day one, I think. That was going to be my next question with the, the Alphonse Taylor situation. Jonah Williams, do you expect Alphonse Taylor to not start week one against USC? I think it's, it's stacked against him because, you know, Nick's already in Nick Saban's doghouse because of his weight and, and then the DUI. Uh, he could still be potentially facing a suspension. And, and quite frankly, I don't think he's addressed his conditioning issue. He doesn't appear to be in the best shape, even after Nick Saban called him out during the spring. But it's clear they think he can help them. Otherwise, uh, he wouldn't be even running with the second team at this point. He's, I was quite frankly surprised he was even practicing with the team because normally an indefinite suspension means that you're not with the team. But they feel, they feel like they need him. I think that offensive line, while you know they've been practicing with the same five for the last couple of days, I still think there's some experiments they want to try out. wouldn't surprise me if they looked at Lester Cotton at right tackle. I think he's more developed and ready to play there than Jonah would be this year. But they like and hope that Lester can play left guard because then it would give them a really solid left side of that offensive line. So uh, I think there's a few more experiments, especially right guard. I don't know who ends up, you know, Bradley Bozeman has been there the last few days, a really strong kid. Mm -hmm. But they've also worked Dallas Warmack out there. Brandon Kennedy played there in the spring. And then, of course, there's Shank. So I think there's still some movement we might see between now and uh, when the first game of the year kicks off. Well, you got Calvin Ridley, Robert Foster, uh, Adarius Stewart. How good is this wide receiver group at Alabama? (laughs) It's absurd. (laughs) They're loaded. They're absolutely loaded. Um, I've been beating the drum for Robert Foster since spring. I think a lot of people have overlooked him because he was injured last year. And most people forget that he was the leading receiver on the team in yards, receptions, and touchdowns when he got hurt. And he was the number one guy last year. His injury, his unfortunate injury caused Calvin Ridley to have the year he had. So now I think Alabama's in a position where they have legitimately two number one receivers that could play anywhere in the country. Um, And they, and Robert Foster and Calvin Ridley, and then throw in our Darius Stewart and Gary Beter and O.J. Howard. And um, it's an embarrassment of riches they have at wide receiver, not even to mention Cam Sims and some of those guys. So <laughs> whoever wins the quarterback is going to have a lot of weapons to throw the football to. Talk about that transition going from Kirby Smart to Jeremy Pruitt and, and it being – it seems like it's been pretty smooth. It is. And, and Jeremy is a guy that – there's a reason that Nick – Saban didn't make any other phone calls. I mean, he knew in yeah. the back of his mind that if Kirby ever left, Jeremy was the guy. Mm-hmm. Jeremy had impressed him that much of his knowledge of his defense while Jeremy was in Tuscaloosa. And then, and then Jeremy went away and learned some new things, and I think can add some. Of course, it's still Nick Saban's defense, but Jeremy, you know, being under Jimbo at Florida State and uh, and then going to Georgia has, has been out on his own, has learned a few things, and, and probably brought with him some, some new wrinkles we might see in the defense this year. This is a Georgia. Defense last year under Pruitt that was number one ranked pass defense in the country. So um, I know that, that the secondary Alabama has been a, a target for a lot of criticism the last few years. I thought they played much, much better last year than the previous two seasons. Mm-hmm. But um, I think Jeremy Pruitt's a guy that likes to be aggressive and doesn't mind playing young talent if it's uh, even if they're a little less experienced than than a less talented player just for the sake of getting the experienced player on the field. I think. Jeremy's not afraid to do that. Yeah, Aaron Suttles joining us for just a few more moments on the Main Street Family Urgent Care Hotline from the Tuscaloosa News. Aaron, this whole situation with Maurice Smith, what's your take on it, and, and how do you see it being resolved? Well, my take on it is I think it's orchestrated by Kirby Smart. I really do. Um, uh, the thing that makes zero sense to me is if, if Maurice is frustrated that he got benched last year when he was injured and lost his starting job to, to uh, Ronnie Harrison, who are the two guys that made that decision? The two guys that made that decision are Kirby Smart, the defensive coordinator, and Mel Tucker, his position coach. Mm-hmm. And those are the two guys he would be going to play for in Athens. It makes zero sense to me. Georgia had a very young secondary last year that finished number one in the year and number one in the country in, in pass defense. They're, they've got their five main defensive backs set at Georgia. He'd be behind the eight ball already because they've started 
fall, fall camp and fall practice. I, the move doesn't make any sense, but at this point, the guy wants to go. He's already burned so many bridges in Tuscaloosa. I don't know if his right. teammates would trust him anymore. I don't know if the coaching staff would trust him anymore. It's probably best just to let him go. But I, I do understand the sentiment in not setting a precedent that opens this up to mm-hmm. anybody that wanted to go play for Kirby Smart. I, I think you've got to shut that down. But um, I think and they'll never come out and say this, but I think Alabama and Nick Saban is really disappointed in the SEC for not stepping in and taking up for one of their member schools right. because this is an SEC rule, not an Alabama rule. And the SEC has absolutely left Alabama hanging out here in the wind to take basically a beating over this. Mm-hmm. And I don't, they'll never say it, but I don't think they appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. All right, Aaron, we do appreciate it, and we look forward to talking to you in the future, man. All right, guys. Thanks, Thanks Aaron. Aaron. Congrats on the show. Thank appreciate you, buddy. It. There's uh, Aaron Suttles from the Tuscaloosa News. Interesting very, tape. We'll talk about that. Very interesting, yes.